my name is Lilika. Math is a subject that a lot of people um, tend to hate. I used to have a frick ton of anxiety hovering over the subject. Just looking at my math textbook would trigger the most like archaic Neanderthal ooga booga man make fire defense mechanism in my brain and I would literally feel too anxious to do the questions like it felt like I was losing my mind I think uh, that was for a variety of reasons math is a subject that is especially unfair in that your understanding of the subject really does depend on whether you have a bad teacher or not it's a very building block based subject as in if your more foundational blocks were a bit iffy back when you were learning about like long division in the third grade then you'll have some trouble understanding the concepts that are kind of build on top of that now the good news is that if you make some crucial adjustments in your understanding of the concept of learning math and you make an effort to go back and strengthen those foundational building blocks and to be diligent in their upkeep there will be a massive shift in your understanding but most importantly your enjoyment of the subject so just before i switch gears into my like gandalf this is how you do math my child type of spiel firstly please ignore my hair um, i'm growing it out so it looks very bad right now but we're getting there secondly I used to hate math. I used to be quite bad at it actually. I just didn't understand it and as I said it was a subject with a lot of fear surrounding it for me personally. So I get where you're coming from like I've been there but I finished school last year and I got the best grade for math that I've ever gotten for it in my life and you know I'd like to think that I've made some progress and I would I've loved to be able to show my 13 or 14, 15 year old self that. You know, like just as a bit of encouragement. Like if you're struggling with math now, you're not stupid. You just lack the tools to know how to tackle it. Okay, so what's the game plan? Firstly, you need to study for math. Now, this might be something where you're like, yeah, sure, Lily, that's flipping obvious, whatever. But what I used to think was like math is kind of one of the subjects where you just, you read the textbook and then you jump right into doing practice questions and I don't know why math is all about applying the same principles to a broad variety of questions so you need to know your stuff before you can apply it math sucks when you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to approach a question or you keep on getting a question wrong but you don't know why and that's why studying is so important so here's what you do you keep a notebook just like you would for any other subject and in it you'll write down your formulas key concepts and here's a top tip example questions this notebook is gonna be kind of like your cheat sheet if you're doing practice questions and you just hit a blank or you get lost in the middle of one of the questions and you can't remember something you want to be able to open your notebook look at it oh this is what I need to do oh right that's how you factorize or whatever and then you can just jump right right back into doing the questions again. So as you're writing your notes in the textbook, assume that you're gonna forget everything that you're learning. You don't want to like write a short novel on every concept, but you know, add a bit of context to what you're writing down because your future self probably won't remember the context that you had as you were writing the notes. It's chill, that's like how brains work. Just keep that in mind as you're writing down your notes and contextualize it just to help out your future self. The second tip or principle or whatever is revise <laughs> the fact that your brain is kind of like not very keen on keeping information long term like it's kind of like a a, a preteen jumping from one crush to another every week you gotta be revising older concepts to make sure that they're still there when you're building on top of them and adding new concepts to your kind of like math tower for example I would suggest doing one or two practice questions from every chapter that you've done in the book every day so this should take you like 10 minutes so don't be too intense about it but this will really help you to remember how to do the things that you learned like three months ago so that you don't forget everything and have to like revise your entire textbook when your exam comes you're just reminding your brain that that piece of information exists so it doesn't just delete it as well as doing practice questions I'd suggest, you know, learning the language of math. If a question says something like about congruent angles or whatever, and you're like, 
I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's not ideal. <laughs> so learn the language. It'll make it easier to understand what's going on in questions in the future. You should definitely revise your formulas as well and try to memorize them. This should be fairly easy considering that you're going to be doing, you know, past chapter questions. But just because you're applying the formulas every now and then, you shouldn't have that be a reason that you neglect actually going back and revising the formulas. My dog is yelling. And that's, a, that's another thing, which is kind of a tip in and of itself. Tip two and a half. <laughs> understand where formulas come from. It's really important that you understand where the formulas that you're using come from. Because if you don't understand how they work, if a question that you're given an exam is a bit more sneaky in the way that they kind of give you clues on which concept you should be using to, you know, tackle the problem. If you don't understand the inner workings of the formula, you might not be able to kind of shift it a bit to be able to stick it into the question to get the right result. So it's important that you don't just memorize formulas, but rather that you understand what all the variables mean and how they relate to one another. And this will help you to memorize it a lot easier anyway, because if you understand it, it won't just be like a random piece that's floating around in your brain. It'll be stuck uh, into your general understanding of math, which means that you probably won't forget it as easily. And I mean, that's useful anyway. So yeah, revise. <laughs> the third principle is kind of a bit more of a mindset, but genuinely, you're not stupid. You just need it explained in your language. Oftentimes, understanding a concept in math is literally just as easy as someone explaining it to you in a way that just makes it click in your brain and suddenly you know what's going on. If the penny isn't dropping via your teacher's lecture, then go ask like a friend who understood the, the, the topic that they were covering. If, if they can't explain it to you, then maybe go to your teacher again and ask them to re-explain it to you. But let's be honest, that's social interaction and I for one do not support it. <laughs> so turning to online resources might be the way to go if you're not, you know, fully getting a topic. As you probably know, if you've watched like any of my other videos, I am a big fan of Khan Academy. She is a queen and she has my tier three sub till the day that I die. <laughs> Khan Academy is a non-profit website where they make a break ton of video lectures on different subjects and on every concept and topic within those subjects. So they have not just for math, but for physics and bio and computer science and anything you could want for any school level subject, they'll have that there for you. As I said, it's video style lectures. So it's a teacher talking to you and then like kind of writing on a board. And that makes it a lot easier to understand, especially because the videos are pretty conversational in their style of teaching which makes it, you know, a bit more personable and easy to understand. They do example questions so you can actually understand how to apply what you're learning. And they also have sample questions at the end of video lectures so that you can, you know, practice what you were taught right off of the bat to see if you really understand it. Not just that, but they also have a fairly active community um, forum where you can type in questions about specific videos or specific parts of different videos and there will nine out of ten times be someone who replies and helps you. Another resource that never failed to help me understand something that maybe even Khan Academy couldn't get into my head is a YouTube channel called the Organic Chemistry Tutor. I've simped for this guy as well in other videos like if he proposed to me I would marry him. He has hours and hours of video content on all types of subjects explaining concepts that are often misunderstood and or are hard to understand for students. He does a lot, a lot of example questions starting at uh, more low level questions and then slowly building up to more normal or difficult questions. But explaining it in a way that is so easy to understand that you almost don't even realize that the questions are getting harder. Like honestly, this guy's a saint. Again, link in the description, definitely check that dude out. Okay, so we've got studying, revision, and then essentially seeking out different resources if you don't understand a topic. And the fourth would be practice. Once you've fully studied and understood a topic, the only thing you can do after that to really solidify it in your brain is to do practice questions. Though revision and studying is very important, what math does really come down to is 
just practice. The thing is though, if you understand the concepts that you need to apply to questions, doing the questions actually become fun. Now, if you told me this like six years ago, I would tell you that you are insane. Um, I definitely did not enjoy doing practice questions at all. But once I started applying a few of these concepts and I started figuring out which online resources helped me specifically to understand concepts, doing maths just got so much more fun. Like I started being able to just do like 30 questions in a row covering a topic that I learned about and you know, churn them out just like that. And, and that was like the most relieving feeling in the whole world. <laughs> It's like, this is what polish feels like. So do as many questions as you can whilst you're covering a topic. Not like an insane amount, like doing a hundred questions and barely paying attention would be a lot less useful than doing like 10 questions and really paying attention. But you should definitely be practicing more than you're studying. In tandem with studying though, you'll start to really internalize the concepts that you're practicing and if you then go and revise them every now and then they really stick with you for a long time and you'll be able to recollect ideas without too much effort and that's very useful when you have to you know just pull out concepts and formulas and whatever when you're writing an exam you know practice 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 the fifth principle which is a bit less fun but still very important is that difficult is good i think i think my biggest issue when it came to math was that I saw struggling with a question or getting a question wrong as failure. Now, though this is true in that you failed to produce the correct answer, that doesn't mean that you're a failure at math. I've mentioned this in other videos, but failure is the only way that you can learn. And I know that's kind of cliche, but if you're not failing, you aren't learning. Math is all about a sitting with a problem, trying it over and over again, until you get it right, no matter how many times you fail. That's that's really the only way that you can truly master the subject. As you do this, you know, just really grappling with questions, you'll, you'll start to find secret formulas that you personally come up with like shortcuts and, and different ways that you can approach questions and you'll really, you know, make the subject your own and you'll be able to do questions that people throw at you a lot easier because you got rid of that fear-based failure is not an option mindset that kind of constricts you in being able to enjoy and fully understand and master math as a subject. Now I know that sounds very like I'm 14 and this is deep, but it's really true. Like if, you, if you're scared of the subject, you won't enjoy it. And that's just how it is. So for example, while you're doing a question, don't just skip ahead to the answer if you don't understand how to do the question. Never look at the answer sheet until you've tried at least three different ways of approaching the subject or the question. If you really don't know what's going on, look at like sample questions that the book usually has or go online and watch a YouTube video or two and then try to do the question again. You should never skip over questions and you should never ignore your doubts. You need to clear your doubts up ASAP or you'll be very confused and there'll be holes in your knowledge that'll really start showing when you're approaching the end of your studying and learning time and your exam is coming. That ouchy ouchy feeling you get in your brain when you're doing a difficult question, that's the feeling of actually applying yourself in your learning. That's the, the feeling of those neural pathways strengthening in your brain and that'll make it a lot easier for you to do questions in the future. You can't be lazy guys like you no know, take breaks when you need to but always apply yourself fully when you're learning so difficult is good that leads me on to number six active recall speaking of really applying yourself in your learning studies have shown that the study methods that are the most popular among students are actually the least effective when it comes to remembering information long term in a study done in 2013 participants were split into four groups. The first three groups were told to use studying methods such as, uh, you know, reading, rereading, and like mind mapping. And they were told to memorize information that was given to them. And the fourth group was told to apply active recall as they were learning the information. What they then did was they called the participants back a week later and they gave them a test to test, you know, their knowledge and their understanding and how much of the information that they learned a week prior they were actually able to recollect now as they were doing the test. The results were 
pretty conclusive. Like active recall is definitely the most effective when it comes to actually remembering things long term. If you're not using active recall in your studying, then you're being objectively less productive than you would be were you using the method. Now, what is active recall? You may ask. Well, do not fret because I made a video just for that specific purpose to help you understand. I cover exactly what active recall is, uh, the studies that back it up, and then a few principles that you can use to really apply active recall into your studying in a way that is very effective and really utilizes it to its fullest potential. So definitely go check that out if you're interested. Um, it really is the best way to learn. And if you're not using it, you're going to get left behind. So click on that video, check it out. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful and good luck on your studying journey.